Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome. Um, you know, we're here uh, to celebrate the man of the hour, uh, Brian Callahan. Uh, before we get started, I uh, want to say some thank yous uh, to the people who are part of this uh, search committee um, and to help drive the interview process. Uh, I want to start with uh, Chad Brinker, uh, Anthony Robinson, uh, Burke, uh, Bryce Wasserman, uh, Miss Amy, uh, Kenneth, Burke, I meant uh, Barkley, sorry, uh, our entire business staff, uh, as well as Sarah Bailey, uh, Todd Torricelli, um, and one name that's not a part of this organization I feel the need to uh, thank is Zach Taylor, uh, head coach of the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Zach was, his um, ability to communicate with us, you know, about Brian is, I feel is unmatched and I would be remiss um, if I didn't say thank you to him. So thank you, Zach, um, for all the, uh, all the help you provided. Uh, going into the process a little bit, um, as well documented, as you guys know, we interviewed nine candidates uh, over the course of uh, two weeks or so. Um, it was a long process. Uh, I feel like um, we met with a lot of candidates, uh, mostly via Zoom. Uh, we had one in uh, in person, um, as well as the uh, second round of interviews that were in person. Uh, I want to thank those gentlemen uh, for the time that they gave us. Uh, some guys were still in the uh, playoff hunt, and so it was uh, – a little bit of a situation to kind of work around schedules and when teams uh, made guys available to us, uh, but we made it work. Um, I thought our process was very thorough. Um, it allowed us to see the best uh, of each candidate, uh, which ultimately led us uh, to who we're here to celebrate now uh, in Brian Callahan. Um, I'm going to stop calling him Brian Callahan because we call him Cali. So uh, <laughs> um, the one thing that stood out to us um, with Cali was just his ability to not only know what he wants, but be able to articulate that in a clear and concise manner. And what that would allow us to do, it allow our players to understand what their roles are and go out and execute and play fast, which is what we're going to do. But the only other side of that, as a scout, as a personnel guy, it gives us the ability to know what we're going out to hunt for. And one thing that we keep talking about here as our group um, is hunting at the same time isn't the same as hunting together. And under Brian Callahan, we will be going out and hunting together. And so I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited, and I'm actually ready to get off this podium and get ready to get started. So with that said, we'll bring up our controlling owner, Ms. Amy Adams-Strunk. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. And wow, it's been an exciting week. I am thrilled to be here to introduce our new head coach, Brian Callahan. And going into this interview process, we knew Brian was a really special candidate. We knew his background and his extensive experience. We saw the list of quarterbacks he's worked with and elite offenses he's been a part of. We knew about his deep knowledge and understanding of the game. And on a personal note, I knew that we both shared the connection of having fathers who passed down their love of football to their children. And after all that research and the reviews of people whose lives and careers he has impacted so deeply, then we got to meet Brian. He exceeded all of our expectations. It was clear how the meeting quickly shifted from your standard interview to a player breakdown session that he and Ran had a very special chemistry between them. Honestly, watching that interaction unfold made us even more confident that he was our next head coach. As our second interview went on, we realized that we didn't want him leaving the building without agreeing to be our next head coach. I've heard various things about me grabbing him and grabbing his legs, but anyway, it was a mutual thing here. Um, when it came time to ask him, we were so happy to learn that he wanted to be a Titan as much as he wanted him to be. We are thrilled that we get to enter this next era of Titans football with him at the helm. As I've said time and time again, I will never shy away from saying that I have extremely high expectations for our football team and really our entire organization. I expect us to build a team that is going to have sustained success and bring Lombardi trophies to the city of Nashville. I am confident that we have put the right pieces in place 
to bring that goal to life and build a future that Titan fans will be proud of. With that, I'd like to introduce the head coach of the Tennessee Titans, Brian Callahan. Now, this is a pretty surreal moment for me. I need to fix this for you. Is that good? Um, you know, you don't get to these places uh, in front of rooms like this with, with incredible people um, sitting here watching this um, without a lot of help along the way. And so I want to make sure that I, that I point out the people that, that have done that. Um, and most importantly, uh, there's, you're going to have to bear with me because it might be a little more difficult than, than I thought it was before I got up here. Um, this really is a lifelong dream of mine to, to be standing uh, at this podium in front of everybody here. Uh, to be a head coach at the highest level, uh, to be um, this franchise's head coach uh, is, an, is a great responsibility and an incredible honor. Uh, I'm excited to put in the work and hard work necessary uh, for us to be able to have the success that we all envision. There's great things about Nashville and there's great things about the Tennessee Titans and part of my job is to make sure that we bring all those things to life. I'd like to thank first and foremost uh, Amy, Kenneth, and Barclay uh, for giving me this opportunity to run this historic franchise in partnership with you. Uh, again, it's an incredible responsibility that I do not take lightly, uh, and it's one that I'm deeply appreciative for. Uh, from the moment of our first Zoom meeting, uh, I felt an unbelievable connection uh, to, the, to the people in the room, and that was, uh, as Rand mentioned, uh, Anthony Robertson, Chad Brinker, um, Rand, Carthon was in there, uh, Burke was in there, Bryce was in there. Um, just the connection from the get-go was, was incredible. And I knew that it was going to be a place that I wanted to call home. It felt like that from the very beginning. Um, I'm thankful that they felt the same way. Uh, I, was, I was about to uh, make an impassioned plea to Rand uh, as our meeting was concluding on Monday uh, evening. And it turns out I didn't have to do that. Uh, they wanted me about as, exactly the same way that I wanted them. Uh, and that, everything felt right. The relationships felt right. The energy felt right. Uh, and when I was walking around the building uh, and we had opportunities to meet people from different parts of, of, of the organization, uh, it was an incredible feeling. It felt like a family. Uh, I've been fortunate to be a part of an incredible organization in Cincinnati uh, that felt very similar. Uh, and, I've, and it was comfortable to me to feel that. Uh, there's, there's unbelievable people here. I haven't met all of them, and I can't wait to meet, meet everybody that works in this organization. But, man, if you guys could feel the way I felt after that first Zoom meeting, I was about to call Rand and be like, all right, man, let's get it done. I, wanna, I don't care what anybody – you can talk to whoever you want to, but I want it done now. Um, and that's how I felt. It was very important to me uh, that this is the place that I want it to be. And, I, again, I'm very thankful that they felt the same way. Um, I do want to point out um, – Really, most importantly, though, that there was an instant connection uh, with Rand and I. And it, we see building a team, uh, we see the culture of the building uh, the same. And that's an important part uh, of this entire process. Uh, his energy and passion for the Tennessee Titans made me believe in him. Uh, and that's what made me want to be here standing in this room. And I'm, again, thankful that I get to be here because a lot of that is because of what Rand uh, presented as we started this process. He's an excellent communicator, and he's an outstanding person. Uh, he's earned my respect immediately, and Rand, I can't wait to get going. Um, I do want everyone to know that this has felt like a family to me from the start, and that's one of the most important things to me uh, is my family. And so when you talk about that, there's a quote from Jurgen Klopp. I didn't want to just rip it off and present it as my own, but he, he had said it at one point. He's a soccer coach at Liverpool. He said, when you agree on a common idea and work towards it together, uh, you can create something very special. And that's what I believe in. That's what we'll do here. Um, that, to me, is, is what this is all about. And there is no ability to have success without those principles. All right, I would like to thank the Cincinnati Bengals organization. Mike Brown, uh, who is one of, probably one of the greatest men that I've ever met. Um, 
I'll get it together in a second. Don't worry. Uh, Katie and Troy Blackburn, their daughters Elizabeth and Caroline, uh, and Duke Tobin and his staff. Uh, they gave me an incredible opportunity to grow, and, and they were patient, and they invested in me, uh, and I'll forever be grateful for that. The, <clears throat> the next one, and you can see, <laughs> you can see how much these people mean to me. I'll get it together. All right. Uh, and then probably most importantly, uh, Zach Taylor. Uh, he's a great friend. Uh, he's been an incredible mentor. And he's a fantastic football coach. Thank you for everything. All right. Thank you to the players and the coaching staff. Uh, obviously, without an incredible amount of hard work, I don't get to stand here. And there's a lot of people that go into that, staff, players, um, particularly the quarterback room, Joe Burrow, Jake Browning. Uh, those guys uh, are, are, I'm incredibly indebted to. Uh, I wish I could list the whole team, uh, but I can't. We'll be here too long. You guys will get bored. Uh, but I loved working with those players every day. Uh, there's, there's, there's something special about where I came from uh, that I hope to replicate here. I think you can see it uh, and how I feel when I speak about it. Uh, but I love going to work every single day there. And that's the environment we're going to create here. I want a place where people love coming to work. They enjoy everybody they're around. And that creates an environment that's sustainable and you can have sustained excellence and have a chance to win uh, a lot of football games. And so that's what we're after. I would like to thank probably most importantly uh, than anybody else in this room, uh, my wife, Allison, who's standing right here, sitting right here. Uh, She's everything I could ever ask for in a partner. Uh, this, is a, this is a difficult profession, uh, and I wouldn't be here today, and I couldn't do my job uh, if it wasn't for her. Uh, to my two wonderful children, thank you for being good today. Uh, uh, Nora, right here, and Ronan, right there. You say hi, bud. Hi. Yep. <laughs> All right, and there's a lot of people that I don't get to say here um, that, have, that have invested in my career and invested in me. Uh, that are hugely important in, in to me getting to this, this, this point in my career. But uh, I apologize, I can't list everybody again, but thank you to everybody who's ever invested in me, who spent time with me, who's helped me grow. Uh, I'm very appreciative for all that time and effort. I'd like to thank my parents, uh, Bill and Val. They are not here today. Uh, they're watching somewhere on the stream. Um, they've been the most influential people in my life. Um, they've been my biggest supporters, uh, and they've given me an incredible amount of confidence they showed me the type of love and nurturing uh, that allowed me to be the person I am today. Uh, and there's nobody that, that I'd, I'd lean on more at any point in my life than, than both of them. Uh, they've been the single most greatest influence I've ever had. Um, and thank you for the love and support. Uh, just a couple people in my family I'd like to point out. Um, <clears throat> uh, my brother Danny, his wife Susie, uh, my sister Catherine, her husband Chris, their kids, Liam and Evelyn, my youngest sister, Jackie, and my family means everything to me. I love you guys. Thank you for everything. Uh, my in-laws, Connie and Jack, my brother-in-law, Jack, his wife, Sherry, along with their three kids, uh, Jack, Navy, and Wells. That's a lot of Jacks in there for those of you who are counting. Um, thank you for all the love and support as well. All right, there's two people here that I'd like to recognize. Um, but first, my, my high school coaches at De La Salle High School in Concord, California, is a place that I'm incredibly proud to have gone, incredibly proud to be a part of, um, and specifically Bob Latticer and Terry Edson, uh, who are not here today, uh, but hopefully they're watching this. Uh, thank you for showing me uh, what commitment to hard work was uh, and what it meant to be a part of a team. Uh, I'd like to have special recognition for Mark Pinella, his wife Sue, uh, his daughters Francesca and Sophia, who are Sitting somewhere, they're here somewhere. Mark and Sue are right here in the front. Uh, Mark was my quarterbacks coach in high school. Uh, he is a Franklin resident uh, here today, uh, and he helped raise me into the man that I am standing right in front of you. The last one I'd like to point out uh, is Patrick Walsh. Patrick Walsh is currently the head coach uh, at Sarah High School in San Mateo, California. Uh, he gave me my first coaching and teaching job in 2008, uh, and so I felt like it was important that he be here for this. He came all the way from California. Uh, took the red eye last night to, to be here, so thank you. 
Um, he's one of my closest friends and incredible mentors. And again, I would not be how he'd be sitting here in front of you uh, without his love, support, and guidance, and he's always been there for me. Thanks, P-Dub. Yep. All right, moving on to past the emotional stuff here. I'm glad that's over. Um, what we're trying to do here is establish a culture of high standards and clear communication, both on and off the field. Meetings, walkthroughs, practices, how we interact in the building, how we work in the, in the, fr the front office, how our scouts work, how our players work, how everybody in this building works. Everyone's going to be held to a high standard. We want to be held to a high standard. I've never met a player in football that doesn't want to be held to the highest possible standard so we can go make that happen and get it done. There's going to be excitement to walk into this building every day. You guys saw how emotional I got talking about Cincinnati. Well, that's how I want our players and people to feel here. When you walk in the building every day, there's an incredible excitement about what's ahead. Anybody who deals with our players, the expectation is to bring great energy, have great experience, and have great expertise. We want everyone who affects them to be able to have that enthusiasm and our shared vision. We're going to be a connected football team. We're going to be a connected organization. I believe in it. If you don't have a connection, it's really hard to do anything of worthwhile. The business of this sport really is all about people and relationships, and so if we don't have any sort of connection, there's really no point in us doing our jobs the way we do it. This is what makes it fun. This is what I enjoy the most, is being able to be connected with the people that I work with every single day. All right. Everyone wants to be something, wants to be a part of something bigger than themselves. That's what makes this sport special. That's what makes sports in general special. But if you're a part of something bigger than yourself, you sacrifice for the greater good. You give up some of your individual successes and aspirations so we can lift the team. And there's been that, that trait goes from high school through pro football. Every, every team I've been on that's been great has had those traits. And it's a critical part of building a great football team. Being a great teammate, playing hard for each other, helping everyone around them accomplish a greater goal uh, is the principles of what this program will be built on. Those are the things that we're ready to accomplish as a football team, as an organization. I cannot wait to get started. These are the things uh, that I, I enjoy this part, but the work is really what I enjoy the most. And so I can't wait to get going. I can't wait to see our players. Uh, for all those guys out there watching, I can't wait to meet you. Please come see me. My door's open. Uh, I can't wait to start building our relationship so we can go, uh, go win a bunch of football games and have a lot of success. The last thing I'll say is that really to the Titans fans, the city of Nashville, and the great state of Tennessee, all right, we're going to need your incredible support. You're a huge part of this. We need Nissan Stadium to be the most feared stadium that people walk into every Sunday. We need every, every, every possible bit of energy, every, every last amount of enthusiasm. Our players need to feel the energy. I can't wait to see you guys there. It's going to be a lot of work ahead, but a lot of fun as well. I'm proud. Uh, I'm humbled uh, to be standing here before you as the head coach of the Tennessee Titans. Thank you. Brian, yeah. what, what are your feelings about Will Levis, and uh, have you connected with him? I have. Before? I have. I called Will uh, last – I don't even know what day it is anymore, but uh, I called Will a few days ago um, after I got the job. And then I saw him here today. He, he was working out, so I got a chance to, to catch up with him. Um, I told him he's leaving town, I think, tomorrow morning, but he'll be back. But I've, I've really enjoyed getting to know him. Uh, I can't wait to get to work with him. Um, he's got a lot of really special physical talents um, that, I'm, that I'm excited to go, to go see if we can make better. And um, everything about him so far has been fantastic, and I'm excited to get to go further down into it. Brian, your catalog of quarterbacks you work with is pretty extensive. What are some of the things you learned from guys like Peyton Manning, Stafford, et cetera, yeah. Burrow, that you want to bring to help Levis develop the way he needs Yeah, to I've been incredibly fortunate to be around great players. Um, and those guys all bring something different and unique. Uh, when you talk about Peyton Manning and his, his incredible ability to prepare, uh, the intention to detail that he brought every single day, the intensity that he went about his job, um, he shows he those years I was with him showed me what it was like uh, to be what a great quarterback should look like. 
Um, and not everybody's going to be him, and nor is anybody expected to be. But uh, the foundation of how he went about his business was, uh, was pretty incredible. And I've taken that everywhere I've gone. Uh, as far as the work ethic involved, the attention to detail involved, those things are really important. Um, you know, obviously Matthew is a great player in his own right, and, and I learned that Matthew is very different from Peyton, um, but they were also uh, great players. And you let go, you let those players be themselves. Um, and I didn't try to make Matthew do anything that he didn't want to do. He's not Peyton Manning. Uh, their personalities are different, but they're both great players. Um, and what I learned, Matthew was an incredibly tough player. Um, I've never seen a locker room rally around uh, a player like him the way that they did when I was with him in Detroit. Um, he's one of the toughest competitors I've, I've ever been around. Uh, and so you, you, you see these traits everywhere you go, and you start to realize uh, what it takes uh, for quarterbacks to be successful. And, and I feel like I've got a lot of guys I've been around. Joe Burrow, obviously, um, been around a different version of Joe. I got Joe as a, as a young player. A lot of these guys were veteran players when I was around them. Um, and Joe's a remarkable, remarkable player. Um, he's got a great feel for the game. And so to have an environment as a young player where he was growing um, and having conversations about what he liked and didn't like, uh, really helped me learn how to be flexible with the approach uh, for those players and put them in position to do well. Um, as far as how they go about their daily routine, uh, what they like conceptually and schematically, um, those conversations in that in the quarterback room are are able to help foster uh, hopefully a lot of success. And so, Brian, I know I'm sure everything will depend on. Yeah, now. yeah, I think the the biggest the biggest thing that that we want to do to start is is put the players we have in great position. Um, let them be able to find their roles, uh, define what those roles are for them, uh, and put them in, in the matchups that, they, that we feel are to our advantage. Um, that's a very broad, general uh, offensive philosophy, but um, that's sort of the starting point. Uh, we want to be great detail in the passing game, uh, route definition, route spacing. Um, want to be able to complete balls at a high percentage. Uh, that's, that's always going to be the goal. Um, the run game, we still want to be physical. Uh, don't, don't get that. Uh, don't get that part twisted. That's been part of the Titans' identity for a long time, and it will continue to be. Uh, we'll be a physical football team, um, and we'll be able to, to to run the ball the way we need to to win football games. Um, but that's probably the best way I could say it without going too far in the weeds. Brian, I'm known as a guy who has been able to take quarterbacks and maximize what they do with, like you mentioned before, even to the point of adjusting from Joe Burrow to Jake Browning in the middle of the year. What's kind of the been the key that to that that you found in terms of maximizing what a guy can do? Communication. You know, being able to hear uh, what quarterbacks are comfortable with, uh, what they like. The offense is always going to have enough plays. Uh, there's always going to be enough scheme. And so you want to know what the quarterbacks feel great about. And, and Jake was incredible with his ability to communicate what he liked. Um, we, put it in, we put those things in for him so he could have success. Um, and that's part of what fosters a great quarterback room is the communication between uh, myself, the coordinator, the quarterbacks coach, and the quarterbacks in the room um, is knowing what they, what they like and what they do well. And we try to do as much of that as possible. So if a quarterback says, I don't like something, uh, we're not going to use it, we're not going to call it. Um, and that to me is the most critical part. If you have great feedback and great rapport and a great relationship with those guys, they'll do a great job of giving you the information you need to help them and put them in position to be successful. And Jake was fantastic at it, um, and obviously led to quite a bit of success. What is your philosophy? Brian, Brian, what is your philosophy? Sorry, Brian. What is your philosophy on deep? You're a lot about your yeah. offensive stuff, but what's your defense philosophy? Yeah, um, there's a lot of things you talk defensively. Uh, we're working through, you know, what that's going to look like for us by the types of people we're going to bring in. But at the end of the day, you got to have a very flexible and adaptable defense. You still have to be physical. You still have to run and hit. You have to tackle well. Um, you have to force errors. There's a lot of things you can do that are that in the coverage structure game, in the pressure package game, where it makes it really hard on an offense. And so I know it gives me problems. I know the hard defenses to game plan against. Um, and those are the things that I'm looking for in, in the style of defense we're going to play. Um, without getting too far down, a bunch of characteristics don't mean much until we put the pads on. But um, that's, what I, that's what I look for is what makes it hard for me as an offensive coach. That's the style of defense that I'm looking for. Are you a three four? Oh, they're multiple nowadays. Um, yeah, five-man fronts are part of football, uh, whether you're a 3-4, whether you're an under front. Um, there's going to be those types of players. Uh, everything about the way the structure of, of the defense is built here is going to be pretty similar uh, for, as a starting point. But um, I, I hesitate to put labels on, on what and how we're going to do it at this point. How much does the idea of player feedback kind of inform your growth and development as a coach? Uh, it's a critical part of it. I think players, you know, they're the ones out there doing it. 
and you want to put them in great position. And so uh, you want to know what they like, what they think. Um, a lot of times players have great ideas. Uh, they come to the sideline in a game and, and have a suggestion. And usually when they feel really confident about it, it tends to work. And that's part of uh, the communication that's involved from player to player, from coach to player. Uh, you have to have those guys feel like they're in a place where they can say what they need to say. Uh, and they don't listen to everything. It's not always exactly, uh, not everything they, they suggest works every time, but um, you want an environment where they feel like they can do that and feel like they can have input into what's going on because they're the ones that have to go out and do it. Um, and so if a player says, I don't understand this, uh, how come we don't do it this way? Well, it's my job to explain why. And then if he just still doesn't understand it, I ask him, well, what do you think about it? Um, you can have a good dialogue, and a lot of times you're, you're able to find a great solution to whatever the problem is you're trying to solve. How would you describe, or how would you want others to describe your teaching style, your coaching style? Um, my coaching style is, is uh, consistent. Uh, my demeanor is pretty consistent. Um, I pride myself on being a great teacher. Uh, that's first and foremost. As a coach, that's all you really care about is, is how well can you teach and articulate to the players what they need to do. Um, I have, the, I have plenty of intensity. Um, I'm a pretty laid back demeanor most of the time, as you guys will see. But um, when it's time to make, make corrections and, and bring the energy that's necessary, I can do that. Um, but my coaching style is, is a teaching coaching style. Uh, we're trying to make sure that our guys know exactly what to do, how to do it, um, and can go execute at, at, a, at a really high level and as fast as humanly possible. Protection has been, been a huge issue here in the last few years. Yeah. How confident are you in your ability to help identify players who can fix yeah. that? And how much schematically can you fix that? Um, there's a lot of things that go into protection. Um, some of it starts with as simple as uh, you got to go win. Uh, you got to win versus tight coverage. Um, protection is, a, is an everybody problem. Uh, the quarterback's got to get rid of the ball on time. Uh, they have to more work through progressions quickly. Um, so to say that it's a, it's a specifically the offensive line needs to fix the protection problem, I, I don't agree with that. Um, I think it's a, it's a holistic offensive issue uh, if you have protection problems. And there's a lot of ways you can uh, help weaknesses, um, highlight strengths, and everybody's involved in the process. Um, as far as profiles of offensive linemen and players, you know, obviously you're looking for, for those, the guys that are great at pass pro. Um, you're looking for guys that can anchor, guys that got great length. Um, you know, we'll talk about all the traits at a later date, but um, schematically you can help a ton. You can chip, you can bang edges. Um, backs got to be fantastic in pass protection. They got to know who to block and how to block them. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a holistic offensive issue. And so our job is to find a way to make sure everyone knows all the specifics of what we're trying to get done, and then they can technically go execute it. Some of those specific traits. Excuse me? I'm sorry, will you be the offensive play caller? And yes, I will. So yes, I will. How big of a transition do you expect that to be? Uh, not a big one at all. Um, the way we've worked in Cincinnati, uh, very collaborative. Um, I've been with Zach for five years, uh, working with him as, a, as the primary play caller and me as the offensive coordinator. Um, I feel really great about the process. Uh, part of that is bringing in great people to help me. Um, and that's, that's a, huge, a huge part of our next couple weeks is finding those people. Uh, because when you have uh, an offensive staff that you trust and guys do a great job with their areas of expertise, our third down, our red zone, by the time you get to Sunday, the game plan is, is mainly set. Now where, the, where guys are in their stripes is when you have to uh, adjust and adapt mid-flow mid of a game. And that's where you, you have to have great people involved in the game plan. But I don't see it as a big adjustment. It's going to be a collaborative approach on offense. Um, and we're going to make sure we, we get the best plays uh, and put our players in the best position. So I'm excited about that part. And I'm excited to get a good staff put together. Well, taking you back down that emotional road after you accepted the job, what was your first conversation like with your dad? Uh, it was cool. It was cool. I think uh, I think I asked him. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how many fathers and sons have been head coaches in the NFL. I don't think it's many, um, and that's a that's a really, I think it's a very prideful, uh, prideful thing for him to be associated with him and I. And and I just. You know, it's been a lot. You, you, you live this lifestyle, and, and there's a lot of ups and downs, and there's a lot of, uh, a lot of adversity that comes your way uh, in coaching. And so just the fact that I've been able to stand up here and, and he's been able to do the same thing, um, for, me, for me, that's a huge honor. Um, you know, obviously, you, you want to be like your dad, you know? What is the most important thing, Brian, you learned over the past five years in Cincinnati that you felt like, okay, I'm ready to be a head coach now? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, the, the greatest thing about Zach uh, for me and my experience in Cincinnati was he was an open book. 
And so I was involved in, in a lot of the things that uh, came across his desk, uh, a lot of conversations, um, very involved in the scouting process in Cincinnati, as a lot of you know. Um, and so just seeing all of those processes work over five years, um, seeing the pitfalls and problems, where the landmines can be, uh, his allowing me that access to those conversations has been huge. And I, and I walk into this role today, um, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of surprises, uh, but I feel very confident that I'm prepared for it. And, and it's because of his, his allowance and access to what occurred on a daily basis. Um, and he would often come by and say, hey, this, you should think about this for a second and uh, write this down for when you're, you, when you're doing this. Here's how you should handle it. Um, so just incredible, incredible investment in me uh, that helped me grow. And, I, and again, I, I feel because of all those experiences, uh, I'm kind of uniquely positioned um, for my first time doing this. I feel really good about it. Brian, I saw you mention those things, Brian, having learned those things. What was it about this specific job that was attractive to you? Um, it felt just like the place that I was at. Um, and I mean that in, in the most complimentary way possible because I loved being there. And you felt the atmosphere here. You felt the intensity. You felt the want uh, to be great. And I walked in here on Monday for my interview and that's one of the things that stood out is there's a lot of passionate people here that want the Titans to be a great football team and a great organization. Um, and I felt like that's where I want to be. I want to be a part of that. I want to be with people like that. Um, and that's the highest compliment I can pay is that I, I, I walked in immediately and it didn't even have to do anything. There was nothing about um, nothing about the football part that I even cared about. It was the, it was the people and the people in place here that made me feel like uh, this was the perfect fit for me. The interview process, what, what were the most important things that they wanted out of this? I guess that might be a question for, for them. Um, I think they want to, you know, I think Rand said it before, and I, and I believe it um, really to my core, is that they want, they want a partnership. Um, I think Rand and I are going to build a great one. Um, that, that I don't have any doubt about. Um, and so that, to me, is, is the starting point, is, is, a, is the personalities – uh, to, to mesh and fit and build a partnership with a vision towards building a football team that's got the ability to have sustained success. And um, I can't answer more of that. Maybe, maybe they can chime in, but that to me was the biggest part is that we were forming a, forming a, a partnership and a relationship that um, we're going to work really hard together. I love Rand's line. You say it one more time, Rand, about hunting. At the same time isn't the same as hunting together. Hunting at the same time isn't the same as hunting together. And, um, yeah, we're going to hunt together touched on your staff there. What, what would that process be like? Do you have some people yeah. in mind where you consider people that have been on the staff? Yeah, we're going to take our time. We'll be patient. Uh, we have people in mind. There's people we're going to talk to. Um, we're not in a rush. Uh, we, can, we, can take, we can talk to as many people as we like. Um, as those things come um, more into a clearer focus as I actually get to go sit in my office and work, um, you guys will hear more about it. But um, the process won't be rushed. We're going we're gonna to get the right people. Um, we're going to find great teachers. We're going to find people of high character find great communicators um, and guys that coach with great energy and passion. And so that's what we're looking for. And, and we hope to find them. And we're going we're gonna, to uh, leave no stone unturned to find those guys. And um, Brian, I saw you had mentioned, you know, you're either coaching it or you're allow it to happen. Mm -hmm. How do you go about holding each coach and player to a high standard and just, you know, figuring out where yeah. they count? You have to define them. You know, you have to define what the standard is. Um, a lot of that has to do with execution. Um, the, 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 the way I like to say it is, is be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. Uh, and so as you, as you show guys what the standard is, what the expectation is, um, the easiest way to do it is if they don't meet it is to show what that looks like. This isn't what we're looking for. This isn't what we want. Um, you can be very clear and very demanding um, without having uh, to go jumping through hoops and, and having the fire rager from your head, but it's pretty simple. Here's what the standard is. Here's the expectation. And then when it's not being met, make sure that we're, we're coaching and teaching where, where we've fallen short. And that's to me, is the easiest way to describe how you keep people accountable and you hold people to a high standard. And with that, you look at week six last year, mm -hmm. you know, right before the bye week, you called the guys out and they're coming back, you know, you reemphasize your message. Your message, you guys went out and dropped, what, 31 against the 49ers. Yeah. Like, how do you know when it's right to, okay, I need to get on this guy, let him know, but then when you got to pull back? Uh, it's, a, it's just a feel. It's, uh, again, the biggest part of it is making sure you've built strong relationships with the players. Um, and so you know uh, that they receive those criticisms and coaching points um, in whatever messaging you deliver them. My messaging is usually pretty similar to how I'm speaking right now. 
but there's a time and a place where that messaging might need to be a little firmer. Um, it might need to be a little more colorful. Uh, and, and you just you know based on where your team is at when that might be necessary. And um, again, I, I've known a lot of those guys in Cincinnati for, for a lot of their careers. Some of those guys I've been with for five years, some for four. So I feel really confident in, in where I felt they were in that moment and their ability uh, to receive the message. And sometimes uh, there's a place for that. And I felt like that was the right time, and it certainly felt like it was. Uh, we just had played a really sloppy game the week before and, and didn't execute again. Same thing, the standards weren't being met. And so the idea is to make sure we hold that everybody to the same standard and, and a high one. Um, and so I felt like it was a time and place for that. What was some of the growing up around a coach, and like you said, 10 years old, sitting in your dad's office, form you and teach you not just to be a teacher, but a leader and what it takes to be a head coach? Yeah, you learn probably more by osmosis, just watching people. Um, and then you, th you reflect back and you realize that, that maybe you were learning something along the way. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I was uh, learning a lot about leadership at, at 14 years old. I was sitting in uh, John Gruden's quarterback meetings, and I was just more in awe of, of the players there and listening to John talk. And um, But I reflect back on those moments a lot. Uh, and, and there's things that you learn about how people handle it, how they speak, um, that, you, that you hopefully take bits and pieces of. And it's just been a, a, a lifelong journey of, of doing that. Um, and so I can't point to anything specific necessarily, but um, it certainly helped me be around this game for a long time. I, I feel like I don't, I don't really know any other, any other way or any way of life other than, than, than football. So, um, yeah, that's the best way to put it. Well, have, you thought of, right, have you thought about what it would be like to interview your dad for a job? Um, no, I have not. Um, it's a, I don't know how many sons have interviewed their fathers for jobs, but um, no, I haven't given much thought to that. Is he on your list, Brian? On a list? To, for a possible spot. Oh, he's under contract. I don't. There's nothing I can say to that either way. So, um. analytics to inform scouting decisions, yeah. game plan decisions, and in-game decisions. Yeah, analytics. You know, I think that it's a term that's a broad, a broad stroke term, but there's a lot of details that go into it. A lot of different ways it fits. Um, at the end of the day, you're using you're using uh, hard, concrete data to help inform decision making, uh, and there's there's that's great. The more smart people. Um, the more uh, information that you're given, the better decisions you can make. And so that's always going to be a part moving forward. Um, I believe in that information. I believe in that data. Uh, and again, the, the game management part, uh, the statistical analysis, all those things uh, play a huge role in how we're going to build our, our, our organization. And they, they're, they're important, and it matters. So um, I believe in it. Aside from seeing eye to eye with you know, the people here, the decision makers and whatnot, how much was having a young potential franchise quarterback in place an attraction to this job? Yeah, that's, that part is attractive. Um, I was, I was, I thought that Will was a really good player coming out of college. Um, and I thought when you watch him play this year, you saw really growth. I mean, you saw him learn. Um, the NFL is hard. It's hard on quarterbacks. It's particularly hard on young ones. Um, and so I saw a lot of really positive things. Uh, some of the throws, some of his comp competitive instincts that he put on tape um, were really impressive. And so I'm excited to get to, to dive more into that and how, how can he get better from year one to year two um, and keep putting him in position to have success and so we can score uh, some points on offense. Brian, you obviously worked with a lot of great wide receivers in Cincinnati. What are the qualities that you value most at that position? Um, selfless. That's a big part. Um, you got to have selfless guys. They're a huge part of, of the run game. Um, they run routes to get other guys open. Uh, they work in tandem together. Um, and so that, that's, that's an important part. Um, that's a characteristic as far as physical traits go. Um, you want guys that are big, strong, fast, and can catch. Uh, that's, that's a pretty, pretty easy way to go about it. The more of those guys you have, the better you're going to be. So, um, but yeah, we have, I'll tell you what's great about, about the, and this is a, a huge compliment to those receivers um, in Cincinnati. Incredibly selfless, love playing together. Uh, know when when their time that the ball could go anywhere, and so they never complained, um, not once about who was getting catches or who was getting targets. Um, they knew that at some point it would come for them, and so they just did their jobs every day. They practiced really hard. I thought that was the one thing that was um, really impressive about that group of players is uh, their practice intensity. Uh, they really they'd get after it, and, and that's why we were good is because of the way that they practiced. So. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know if I've, I've kind of went on a tangent there. I apologize, but I hope that answered your question. Specifically working with, with Joe Burrow, a, a younger quarterback, I wonder if some of those things might translate to Will, you know, as opposed to some of the veteran quarterbacks that you were. Yeah, with. It, um, it was a great process to go through, um, I think. And again, even, even with, with Jake uh, making his first couple starts in the NFL, even though he'd been in the league a few years, um, those processes you learn a lot from. You learn uh, how to put the game plan together that suits them. Um, you learn how they learn uh, and you learn what they like to do and how do you highlight those things. And then while you highlight those things, how do you work on the weaknesses with it? So um, I've learned a lot from, from being able being a part of Joe's development from day one um, to now. Obviously, he's a great player uh, and a lot of that development um, he played a large part in as well. So. Uh, those guys are, are impressive people to be around, and, and you, but you take the lessons of, of how you coach that, and you look back and go, was that good or bad? And I think a lot of it was good. Um, there's some things that I would do differently um, that I'm looking forward to, to doing more uh, as I get going with, with Will. What were some of the lessons that you took away from the leaner years early in Cincinnati about what it takes to turn things around and get things back on a good trajectory? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. Um, a lot of adversity uh, in those early years. You know, we weren't, we didn't quite have. Uh, the roster to compete with some of the teams we were playing against, um, but we saw in those in those dark days uh, the core of what our team was going to be. Um, There's a lot of players there in that in that first and second season that uh, are are still there now and were there for for sort of the the glory of it. But um, you le- I learned that the when that, that adversity strikes, consistency. Um, Zach was an incredibly consistent leader. Uh, we just kept hammering the message. Uh, and we believed in what was happening, even though the wins weren't taking place. Um, there wasn't the tangible evidence that this is what's happening, but we felt it. We saw it in the locker room. We knew at some point, as we kept building our roster, that we were going to be a really good football team. And uh, our players believed it. Our coaches believed it. Um, and that's, those are those are good lessons to to be through some of those lean years. I mean, 0-11 was not a fun place to be. Um, but we learned a lot from it. And, and really, the foundation of what our team became two years later um, was a lot of guys that had went through that process. And so you learn a lot about people uh, when things are tough. Um, we learned a lot about our other uh, guys in that football team. And there was a lot of them that were uh, incredibly high character, love playing football. Um, and they, they, they helped us get out of those, those times as well. So um, yeah, you learn the most when, when things aren't going very well. Everyone can be positive when, uh, when you're winning a bunch of football games. So yeah, it was, those are probably incredible, um, intense learning experiences for me. When this team is put together and the draft and free agency, and obviously there'll be turnover each year, what's a constant, what's a consistent you want your teams to be known for year in, year out? Resilient and relentless. You know, I think that's the easiest way to say it. Uh, you want you want your team to have those two qualities, and if you have those things, uh, if you're if you're resilient and you can handle the ups and downs and you can handle the, um, the good and the bad, and you're relentless in, in how you approach every day at work, every day at practice, every game you play, um, your results will they'll come, and um, if you if you turn on the tape and you look at the Tennessee Titans, and I hope those are the two words that come to mind. To a balance on, on offense, as far as like how does that dictate your ability to adapt and, and make those adjustments you have to? One more time at the beginning. Your, your approach to balance on offense is so different from coordinator to coordinator, mm-hmm. but like or play caller, etc. Yeah. For you, like, what is your approach to that, and how much does that? impact your ability to adapt and make the adjustments that you have to do in a game? Yeah, it really depends on the game, you know, and I think there's there's games where uh, you may end up running the ball for, for a bunch of yards and you're, and you're, you're lopsided in a run. There's games where it's hard to run the football uh, and you may push into the passing game. Really, at the end of the day, you try to be as balanced as you can be, but it's really whatever it takes to win that Sunday. Um, and that's the best way I can say it. I don't worry too much about balance. Uh, in that regard, because we're trying to win, and whatever it takes that Sunday to win, we're going to do. Um, you want to be balanced. That's ideal. Uh, you want to have a great marriage or your running pass game. You want to have a great play action game to marry with your screen game. Uh, and you want to be able to throw the ball in the moments that everyone knows you have to throw it. Third downs, red zone, two minute to go win a game. Those You have to be able to execute in all those situations um, to win a football game. And so the balance part um, is important to some degree, but ultimately it's going to be whatever it takes to win. How do you plan on balancing the new role of the head coach, play calling, all the time and energy that goes into that, and then overseeing both sides, well, all three sides of the ball and everything you have to do, and then how will that influence how you build the staff around you as well? Um, yeah, the, to me, it's it's all about hiring the right people and people that you trust, uh, people that can do their jobs at a very high level. 
Um, that's that's a mix of veteran coaches having guys that have been around, having good energy from and younger coaches, guys that bring uh, new ideas, out of the box thinking. Uh, those things are all important when you build the staff. Um, as far as my role, um, I'm going to take it every day as it comes, and and I'm going to learn a lot as we go. But I feel really confident in my ability to handle all the different parts uh, that are asked of me uh, on a day to day basis uh, as a play caller, as a head coach. Uh, as an as an offensive head coach with, with overseeing a defense, and so uh, I'm incredibly confident in my ability to do that. So uh, that's probably the best way I could say it. Thanks. Uh, we'll get some photos here. Uh, and Thanks, guys.